hey guys how's it going welcome back to my channel gardening in cold spring harbor welcome back to long island new york zone 7a if you guys are looking for an online gardening channel which offers tips tricks and all the advice so that you can have the best home garden ever then you guys are in the right place get started now guys by clicking the subscribe button below and if you never want to miss any of the new upcoming gardening videos also click the bell icon youtube will notify you every time i will upload a new gardening video now let's get growing so today i'm going to talk to you not about one not five but ten pepper growing mistakes to avoid when trying to grow an abundance of peppers. And I will tell you how you can possibly prevent or fix this mistake so you can have the best gardening experience growing peppers and the biggest, biggest pepper harvest of your gardening careers. In today's video, I will go over each mistake and will give you possible solution how that mistake can be fixed so mistake number one is placement placement of your pepper plants in your home garden pepper plants can easily cross pollinate what does that mean let's say you're growing multiple pepper varieties let's say you're growing spicy peppers let's say you're growing sweet peppers let's say you're growing bell peppers so if you plant different pepper varieties very close to each other let's say you plant your sweet bell pepper right next to your hot spicy jalapeno pepper or your cayenne pepper what could potentially happen they, they can potentially cross pollinate and when you start to pick the harvest your sweet peppers might taste a bit hot or spicy and your spicy peppers might come out tasting not that spicy at all and why would that happen because you planted different varieties in close proximity to each other and they cross pollinate it so essentially you want to preserve flavor for harvest so if you do not want your sweet peppers to taste spicy or your spicy peppers to taste sweet i suggest not planting different pepper varieties in very close proximity to each other and if you are growing your peppers for the purpose of storing seeds or growing seeds for next gardening seasons, then you definitely do not want to plant various pepper varieties within close proximity to each other. If you are growing your peppers for the purpose of harvesting seeds, then rule of thumb to place various pepper varieties at least 50, five, zero, at least 50 feet or more away from each other if you do not want them to cross pollinate so when it comes to cross pollination there are multiple myths going uh, around so basically cross pollination happens between a mother plant and a father plant so how can that impact your seeds they store their dna in those seeds for next growing seasons so if you cross pollinate accidentally those seeds that you will harvest very very high chance that the next growing season they will not taste how they technically supposedly need to taste
So what is mistake number two, you guys, when it comes to growing peppers? Mistake number two is improper watering. Peppers, just like our tomato plants, need, need consistent moisture, consistent watering. So you cannot put your pepper plants through a period of drought. Say you forgot to water your peppers one day, two days, and then all of a sudden you realize that you haven't watered your pepper plants and you start to pour water and more water and more over water to compensate for that drought which you put your plant through. What does that do? That stresses out your plant's root system. Basically, you're putting your plant through this drought moisture, drought moisture roller coaster. And that is a no-no when it comes to peppers and when it comes to tomatoes. So remember guys, water your pepper plants diligently and consistently. So just like with our tomato plants, water your pepper plants from the bottom. Never water your plants leaves. What will watering your plants leaves do? It will cause something called blossom and rot. Basically, you're splashing water onto the soil, which then splashes back onto the plant's leaves and brings that bacteria from the soil to your plant's delicate leaves. So if you can use a hose on very low water level and aim at the soil, or if you can set up a drip line, your pepper plants will thank you for that. So what is mistake number three? Over fertilizing our pepper plants, or what I, how I like to refer to it is over loving our pepper plants. We do not want to overthink it, guys. We do not want to over fertilize our pepper plants. And especially, we do not want to use the wrong types of fertilizer. So what is an example of a wrong type of a fertilizer when it comes to our pepper plants? High nitrogen level fertilizers, such as chicken manure, or fertilizers which have high N in their N, P, K levels, and N stands for nitrogen, are the wrong fertilizers to use when it comes to growing our pepper plants. Peppers love, love sucking in, eating in as much nitrogen as they can, and compensate their fruit production for their green leaves. What nitrogen does is it boosts the quantity, the amount of green leaves in your pepper plants. That might look very attractive, very appealing, but essentially that is not why we're growing our pepper plants. We are growing them for huge, large fruit harvest. And if you're overdoing it with nitrogen, you are just basically telling your pepper to produce more and more foliage versus more fruits. If you do decide to fertilize your pepper plants, I suggest using a slow release water soluble fertilizer and you place it on the soil where your plant is growing. So every time you water your plant, that fertilizer will mix with water, dissolve and go straight to your plant's root system. And the microbes in the soil will digest it. And that is ideal. That is all your pepper plants need. The water soluble organic fertilizer, which I personally prefer to use when it comes to growing my peppers, is the Spoma Organic Garden Tone Fertilizer. I will link that fertilizer below this video for those of you who are not familiar with this fertilizer or are not sure where to get it. Home Depot sells it now. Uh, Ace Hardware Store sells a Spoma products. Amazon sells a Spoma products. And no, guys, I do not partner with or work for a Spoma by any means. All I'm doing is recommending something that I have been using for years and it works magic in my garden. So I'm sure that it can work magic in your home garden for you as well. So the next mistake I'm going to talk about, I honestly have made this mistake in the past before, and I'm sure that many of you have made this mistake as well. This mistake is planting your pepper plants too early. You might get excited, it's finally spring. Let's plant those pepper plants. No, no, and 
again no guys pepper is not one of those cool season loving plants never has been never will be if you plant your peppers whether it's inside indoors from seed or you buy a transplant from your garden center or nursery and you plant it too early you will stunt your peppers growth you might you might stunt it temporarily uh it might recover no one knows but very very high chance you will stunt it so bad you will stunt it permanently and your plant will die so to grow our pepper plants night time temperatures have to be in the upper 50s to lower 60s night time temperatures you guys nothing below upper 50s if you want to transplant or grow your peppers outside you guys so let's say you started your peppers from seeds inside just too early do not do not transplant your peppers outside if the temperatures are not ideal so this pepper is actually not one of my peppers that I've started. I've actually rescued this pepper from a local garden center. As you could see, it is getting leggy. It is definitely overgrown. And you could see that the root system is just too tight and too large for this tiny, tiny little container that it's been growing in. I got this pepper plant for $1 because I want to rescue this plant. It is still very early here in zone 7A to plant or transplant our peppers outside. So what do you do if you started your peppers from seed and they just outgrew their existing container or are getting too tall? Again, you do not transplant it outside, guys. If you must transplant it to a larger container, say a two gallon, a three gallon container and keep it inside in a larger container until your nighttime temperatures reach a certain correct point then do that guys do not hurt your pepper plants by planting them outside too early in the growing season right now it's starting to rain you guys yes it's starting to drizzle but the skies are looking pretty pretty dark and gray and we've been having heavy rains for the last few days here so i think it's gonna get heavier and heavier this rain so i think we should go to my green room and i think we should continue our conversation about 10 pepper growing mistakes to prevent and to avoid or how we can fix those mistakes inside in my green room come with me guys so here you go guys it started to rain heavy outside and now we're inside in my green room so now let's keep talking about those pepper growing mistakes and we're up to mistake number five guys what is that mistake number five not pruning your pepper plants when our pepper plant grows it shoots up one stalk from the middle up you guys so that stalk gets roughly to around two feet in height. So the taller it gets, there are less growth points, hence less fruits. Also, if you do not prune your pepper plant, they will get top heavy, especially when they start to bear fruit. Meaning if the fruits, if your pepper fruits start to grow on top, the top of your plant will get excessively, excessively heavy. And the taller the plant, the weaker the plant. So come wind, come rain in the summer, you are potentially risking breaking your pepper stalk or severely damaging your pepper. When should we prune our pepper plant? We should prune our pepper plant when it is about a foot in height. So how do we do that? We count off six to eight leaves, true leaves, and we cut off the rest, what's on top. So these are the baby leaves. These are the first leaves that originated when this pepper plant sprouted from its seed. We do not count these. We count the true leaves like these. So one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight. So anything that is above our eight true leaves would get gently cut off like so. How does that help our pepper plant? How does pruning help? It forces the hormone that usually goes from the roots up to the tip of the plant, the very tippy top of your plant, to go back down into the plant's root system. Some of you might ask, how does pruning our pepper plant, cutting off the top piece of our pepper plant, help with its growth and its production? Well, what pruning does is it forces the hormone that usually goes up from the plant's soil root system up into the very tippy top of our plant. Pruning your plant forces that hormone to go back down into the root system, strengthening our plant's root system and having it grow more of these growth points. You guys could see these little tiny little leaves over here, little buds. These are all the growth points. More growth points means lots more peppers. What is mistake, potential mistake number six, you guys? Mistake number six is not supporting or not staking our pepper plants. Pepper plants will get very, very heavy as soon as they start producing those peppers for us. So using a simple bamboo stick and some um, ties with your bamboo sticks or even getting professional uh, pepper supports uh, from our local nursery centers or garden centers will do wonders for your pepper plants. So remember guys, don't forget to stake or give that support to your growing pepper plants. Now we're up to mistake number seven, guys. What is mistake number seven? Not continuously harvesting our peppers. What is the key rule with our pepper plants? The more we pick or harvest, the more peppers our plant will produce for us, especially with shishito peppers, you guys. The more peppers you will pick, the more peppers your plant will continue to produce for you. So what is the next potential growing mistake when it comes to peppers? Is not keeping an eye out for pests or diseases. So I know that tomatoes are probably one of the worst, worst uh, vegetables to grow when it comes to pests or diseases. You have to keep a very, very close eye on your tomato plants. Peppers, the only pest and or disease that I have seen in the past when it comes to pepper plant. Leaf miter is a very common disease when it comes to growing peppers. What is a leaf miner? So if you look at your uh, pepper plant's leaves and you see kind of race tracks, these like lines that look like race tracks on your plant's leaves, that is a disease called leaf miners. So how do I control or prevent this disease? I use neem oil, you guys. This bottle is ready to use. It is organic product. And I use this every two weeks on my pepper plants. As you could see that it controls black spot, powdery mildew, rust, spider mites, aphids, white flies, as well as other insect pests. And you could see that it's safe to use on flowers, trees, fruits, vegetables, even houseplants. You can buy this as a ready to use product, which is what this is, or it was also sold in a form of a smaller bottle as a concentrate. And all you have to do is dilute it with tap water as per the instructions into a regular spray bottle or a mist bottle. And you spray that directly onto your pepper plants. 
So for those of you, my viewers, who are not familiar with neem oil, maybe you've never heard of it. Maybe you've heard of it, but you're not sure where you could purchase this very, very useful yet organic product. I will link this product below this video, but essentially you can purchase it in any garden center, any nursery, even Lowe's, Target, Home Depot sells neem oil. And of course, you can even purchase it online on Amazon. There are multiple, multiple websites and stores that sell this organic product, but I will link it below. Potential mistake number nine when growing your pepper plants is not overwintering your pepper plants, especially if you grow your pepper plants in growing bags or containers. So let's say you prefer to grow a specific pepper variety every single year. So whether it's your jalapeno peppers, whether it's your hot cayenne peppers, whether it's your bell peppers, and say you grow them initially in a pot, container, or a grow bag. There's no, no need to throw out your plants at the end of summer. You can overwinter your pepper plant inside, indoors, throughout fall, and your winter seasons. You're basically bringing your plant, your pot, your container, or your grow bag inside to help your plant's root system not to freeze and die during those winter months. You keep your plant, your container, in a cooler, darker area so your plant can go into, say, this dormancy phase for the winter months. And then when the spring comes, warmer months come, you bring that pot or that grow bag or that container right back outside and your plant wakes up and starts to grow for you all over again. So no need to constantly reseed or start that same pepper variety from seeds every single year. Try overwintering your pepper plants. So here we are, guys. We're down to our last potential mistake when it comes to growing our peppers. What is the mistake number 10? And how can be prevented or fix it if it already occurred? Mistake number 10 is temperature control. What do I mean by temperature control? Too much sun or not enough sunlight. Peppers are sun loving, warm temperature loving plants. They need six to eight hours of sunlight, direct sunlight per day. But they, they do prefer morning sun and afternoon shade. So if your plant is growing in a shady area, full shade to partial shade all the time, that is not an ideal place to grow your peppers. They will not thrive, they will not blossom, and they will not produce an abundant harvest of peppers for you. Let's say you have a spot that is full sun all day long, morning, afternoon, evening. How can that excessive amount of sunlight hurt your growing pepper plants? So extensive, excessive sunlight in the afternoon can cause something called sun skull on your pepper fruits. Not necessarily on the leaves, on your peppers. So what is a sun skull? Sun skull is a mark. It's almost like a bruise, which appears on your pepper fruits, not on your plant's leaves, but on actual peppers. It, it's a soft, indented mark that literally looks like somebody hit your pepper or bruised your pepper. That mark appears on your pepper plants, on your pepper fruits, 
as a result of too much excessive hot sunlight hitting your peppers directly, either during mid-afternoon hours or late afternoon hours. So how can you prevent getting sun skull marks or bruisings on your pepper fruit? One way to prevent it is, of course, to watch out. Keep an eye on the area where you're planting your peppers. Remember, lots of sunlight in the morning hours or early afternoon hours is absolutely fine. In fact, it is perfect for your pepper plants, but not when it comes to mid to late afternoon hours. Your pepper plants prefer partial shade to full shade when it comes to those late afternoon hours. Let's say you're limited to your garden space and you have nowhere else to plant your peppers. Do you get discouraged? Do you stop growing peppers? Absolutely no, you guys. You get shade cloth. You purchase shade cloth and during those late afternoon hours, you cover up your pepper plants with your shade cloth and this will keep your pepper plants protected against that intense hot sun. So if you're looking to purchase your shade cloth, usually it comes with percentage numbers on it, 30%, 40%, 50%, etc. What do those percentages mean? What do those numbers tell you? How do you know which one to choose? So basically, whether it's 30, 40, 50%, so say you choose a 50% sun or shade cloth. What does that mean? That means that that particular shade cloth blocks 50% of sunlight. So your plant will only be receiving 50% of sunlight during the time while the cloth is on your plant. So say you get a 40%. That means that it will block 40% of the sunlight and your plant will only be receiving 60% of sunlight during those hours. One more tip about the bruise marks, the sun skull marks on your pepper fruits. For those of you who have seen them, who have had this happen to them, and you're wondering, can I prevent that? Is there a way to see these marks forming before the situation gets out of hand. Yes, guys. So your pepper's skin starts to shrivel, wrinkle up before that bruise mark starts to form, that sun skull mark starts to form. So if you keep a very close eye on the skin of your pepper plant, of your pepper fruit, it should be nice and firm and shiny, smooth. No, by any means it should not be wrinkled, shriveled, or looks like it's wilting. If you see that on your pepper, that is a first sign of excessive sun heat. And you're about, you're just around the corner from getting that sun skull mark on your pepper. So if you see any kind of wrinkling, shriveling, Cover up your plant with that shade cloth, what we just talked about, and you will prevent those sun skull marks. This is it for this video, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me here today in Long Island, New York, Zone 7A. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I hope you found this video to be very useful and helpful when it comes to growing our peppers. Today we spoke about 10 possible mistakes that any of us can make when we're growing our peppers. We also spoke about how we can limit these mistakes, prevent these mistakes, or even fix these mistakes if they have already occurred. If you guys enjoyed watching this video, show me the support by clicking thumbs up below. You haven't yet done so, do so today, guys. Subscribe to my channel, Gardening in Cold Spring Harbor. I hope you guys enjoy watching my videos and I hope that today there was at least one thing that you were able to learn by watching my video. Thank you so much again. Stay healthy.
happy and be well and i'll see you guys again in my new upcoming gardening videos bye guys